Now I'm gonna start off today here with some blue and white and just do a basic simple sky. Now, as you can see, <laughs> I've got just a little bit of a sketch going on up here. I think, you know, when you're doing something a little more complicated, and this is of course no, this is no surprise to you. You've seen the thumbnail, you've clicked on the video and you know what you're gonna get, but um, I don't, not yet. So I had to sketch it out. So it helps, I, I mean, it helps me a lot to know where I'm going when you're doing something just a little bit more complicated. It's not that it's hard, it's that it's complicated. There's just more going on in this painting than a, than a couple of trees. <laughs> so I wanted to get the perspective right before we go too far. Let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did of my last one. If you're not already doing it and you'd like to share your version, you can use the information there on the screen. And if I see it in time, I will definitely get it in the next video. And then everybody gets to see it, it's kind of fun. All right, I'm just gonna tap in a little background mountain. I'm not gonna worry too, too much about it. Something like that. That'll work. Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, now, maybe a little darker and I can make another layer. I don't think I, I want too, too much going on. Just enough. Lots of mist. It just represents mist. And I may end up kind of blending the back of that barn into the mist. We'll just see how all that goes. You know, this is, uh, I thought about doing this painting in acrylic and, and, Obviously I'm doing it in oil. The reason I ended up not doing it in acrylic is just because I, I felt like it would be easier to get the misty background and just kind of do these random things that I wanted to do in, you know, in this area, in the background. I think the rest might actually be easier in, if you did do it in acrylic. So when you're doing your own version, you know, you can actually stop and let it dry. It doesn't make any difference. You don't get any points whatsoever for finishing a painting all in, in one sitting or while well, it's wet, you can give it a couple weeks or a week or whatever it would be to let it dry. All right, I'm just gonna kind of randomly almost just scrub in color, some light and some dark. Yeah, there, there it is. Okay. See that? Uh, right up in here, perhaps a shadow because our lights coming across somewhat like this today. This will be highlight, this will be shadow, this will be highlight on this side. It at least gets us going in the right direction. Okay, so I'll just fill some of that in. I'm just setting the paint on the canvas. I'm not really trying to make grass at this point. Just use the, the, the canvas as a palette. It works really well. You should give it a try. Cool. Now, right in here, I'm gonna do some grass in what's going to be a dividing area. You know what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and get that in. Don't do that too nicely because you're gonna end up messing it up. So don't spend more than just a moment or two. You're gonna mess it up when you put your dirt around it. So just throw in the basic colors. It's all you need right here today. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me get a shadow right under here. So you can just work your shadows right in where you would expect them to be. If the light's coming through like this today, I would expect there to be a little shadow under here. Okay, gotta do what you would expect. <laughs> Otherwise it looks kind of silly. There you go. That's pretty good. Maybe a little shadow up and through here. Not too much or else you make it look too fluffy. And maybe over here, just although I'm gonna have a tree on this side, a lot of that will not be seen. Now, typically I make you wait for a long time, but I'm actually gonna make the grass look pretty good right now. I'm gonna fluff it so I have a clean fan brush here and I'm just going to tap it just like this and begin to fluff my grassy areas, wiping off my brush so that uh, I don't mix a lot of mud. Now I'm gonna go ahead and begin to underpaint my barn back here. And you know, the only color I'm not using is brown to underpaint a brown barn. Well, because this is my shadow side. You'll see I've got a, I've got a grayish color, grayish purple. Now when I say the only thing I'm not using is brown, what I mean is my color isn't brown. There is umber mixed into it, but really what I have is gray. I don't want, uh, I don't want too much warmth. Now the, the roof will have a lot of rust on it, so that'll be very warm. But if you do too much, um, you'll have trouble <laughs> if you put too much. If you put too much warmth in this, it'll come way too close. I'm gonna paint in the light side of the barn. Of course, the light's coming through like this. Maybe a little bit more brown, because I don't know, we don't need to be too bright. I do wanna have room to highlight. Now, perspective on this. This is almost flat, and then these are sloping down really steep. 
somewhat steep, not too steep, because all these lines end up needing to connect at the horizon down over here somewhere. Let me just underpaint this. This is actually going to be a rock building, something made out of stones, which I think is kind of neat, something different for us. Maybe a little smaller. Yeah, right there, the door was maybe a little too... It's supposed to just look like a little shed. There's my little door. Maybe get some color on that door. Maybe I don't want it just brown. Yeah, that'll work. See, I'm just, you know, throwing color in at this point, almost just willy nilly. And then however it comes out, will be OK. And then we'll, then we'll mess with it and we'll create better details and so on. For now, I just have to get it in. So now I'm going to put in some rusty roof panels here. Just like that. Follow along my roof line there. Good. Don't put too much paint. See, because this is dry, you know, the paint doesn't go on very easy. There's a tendency to kind of put it on thick. But if you do that, then you'll have trouble adding any details on top. So I am going to just spend some time. I'm just going to use what's there and try to spread it around a little better. So now I'm going to brush in some dirt areas and textures here. This is a little bit of like a cutout, a little cliff face where maybe they cut it out to get to the barn, I don't know. It's just interesting, it adds interest, it's interesting. And so that's why it's here. Let's get a little, maybe a little action on this dirt. I don't want it too, too, um, I don't want it too, like brown, actually. That's probably too brown. I should get a little bit more gray in it. There, and even a little bit of yellow ochre feel. Oh, that's a, too bright, but you know, that's okay. Yeah, that's somewhere, somewhere pretty decent right about there. All right, I'm just going to add in some foreground grass with a one inch brush. The filbert brush is too slow and I, this way I don't have to fluff it with the fan brush either. I'm just bringing in these very light grassy areas. I don't know. I don't know that I need a lot of anything going on here. I'm going to have just details and stuff that covers this anyway, so I don't know. I don't know that it's super important. But you see, by having it kind of bright like this, you kind of get a, you get a neat little look. Put some of that in here. We're going to have a lot of grass with the liner brush. Also, it's not just all going to be tapped in. That's just unnecessary. You got to have many, many different things going on to make it interesting. At least I think so. Now I am going to just drop in some texture here to this barn. There we go. I don't know about needing much. We probably just need a little. In fact, I would say I absolutely know we don't need much. I don't want to overdo the dark textures here. I have not yet, and I probably won't wipe this with a shop towel. It's, I don't think I really need to. It's not that wet. It's not that dark. It's, it's just fine. And I'm going darker. You can always go darker on top, typically. It's the lighter colors that really get muddy. So now I'm going to pull in individual boards. I'm not going to go so crazy, you know, individual boards that where it just it becomes nuts. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't I don't need that here. But but some of them would be nice to show, you know, a few a few good ones. Sometimes I think we can get so carried away just trying to do, you know, perfectly everything. And then to where you just use up all your time and you don't have much to show for it. There's a balance. Yeah, that'll work. Is it perfect? No. We're not aiming for perfection here. We're just trying to get the, uh, the overall effect of it. And the overall effect is all you need, really is. So I'm going to just bring in some detail here to some of these uh, panels, the roof panels. Maybe some of these that still have a little color left on them, they're not totally rusted out. Maybe some blue grays, and then, you know, doesn't have to all be white like that. Although the white obviously mixes. I've got a lot of paint down. I have not wiped away my canvas yet. I may not do that at all. Just depends. This barn is just supposed to be kind of misty and kind of soft, so I'm okay with it. Little boards and, and textures. Just to show, hey, there's something going on here, you know, a board like, oh, that's neat. Look at that. I don't want to touch that again. That's cool. 
it's that older, it's an older detail round brush. They don't last forever, just, you know, no brush does. But the softer the brush, the more it doesn't last forever. That's why I've got two or three, and I leave um, my brand new, see look, there's a nice new one. I'll leave that for the final details. And there's stuff that's kind of like, bleh. I'll use this old one, it's all kind of messed up. Because that way I save myself a lot of money, not having to buy brushes all over again, because my new one stays new for months and months. And my old one just continues to get all, well, a lot of character. There we go, just adding in now some highlight to this building. This is a, a rock, oops, that's too much blue. I, I wanted blue, but I didn't want that much. <laughs> this is a, a rock building, stone building, whatever. You know what I mean. There you go. And so this is the way you would do it, just like you would a covered, not as well, it could be a covered bridge, any kind of bridge that is a stone bridge. There you go, it's the same way. At least I, I, I would paint it the same way. And just a bunch of modeled colors, and then you go back in and you draw in your lines. Very similar to the way we did there with the barn. Now I'm gonna put on just a little bit of our yellow ochre color here on the right hand side of what's gonna be a tree. Um, I'm doing just the, the highlight first because why not? I, I've got nothing here to mix with. Just make it fairly straightforward for me. You don't have to do it this way. You can do the dark first and then the light. But I just think it's a little easier for in this. And, and you shouldn't have any trouble mixing here with all this. There's not much going on back there very little to worry about. As we come back in here, I'm gonna maybe get just a little darker, see this? A little more of our green, lots of color here, because, and not, not so dark that it's black, um, I just don't think we need, I think that's a little too dark. It's supposed to be kind of misty and diffused looking, so that will help us to do that if we, if we don't go quite so dark. But that's up to you again, you know, if you need to make it darker, that is fine. I do want to just cover a little bit of my barn, not that it's totally necessary, but just, you know, A, it kind of overlaps, and that's good to have an overlap. And B, just in case there's any perspective issues, well, then it's covered, and I don't have to worry about it. So we'll get our couple little trees in here. So now, although I'm not finished at all with my foreground, I've got a long ways to go yet here in the foreground, I am going to transition into working on a little tree up here. Actually, I guess it's not so little. It's gonna be done just exactly like we did that one. And again, I've got so little paint down here, very, very little, and it's not hard to, to um, get a lot of these beautiful bright greens without, I mean, it's not gonna mix, there's nothing under there really. It's easy. Kind of just make sure I've got a good shape. That's about the only thing I need to pay attention to. This is so, so dry here. There's really almost no paint, very easy. This may not show up that well because the kind of green on green, I could change this green a little, um, you know, maybe to the blue side or whatever. If you throw some Prussian blue in the mix, it, It'll change it just ever so slightly, but it's really not that big of a deal. I'm just trying to create a little light on these bushes here. These bushes are just something because I'm gonna run my, I, I think just a fence in front, something like that. Could do a tree here, but then you'd be covering up a lot of your barn. So I'm just gonna do these bushes there. And you could do them more with a detail brush or you can do them more with a fan brush, as you can clearly see. <laughs> I'm using a fan brush. But I, I did that just because I, I want that extra texture. I've got that over here. So just something different, you know, a little bit dark. Yeah, that's better. See the difference? Maybe I'll kind of make that touch there. Bring in this, maybe up in here. Against that building, we got some bushes growing up. You wouldn't just see it flat, nothing going on. I, you'd see a bush or two growing up there. Now I'm just finishing up putting some textures here on the road. Really not any big deal, just a bunch of little strokes. There are faster ways to do paths than really to, to do each little bit at a time. But I wanted the, you see, I wanted the variety. I've got some yellows, some whites, golds, reds, everything. Everything, you see my palette's just kind of a mess. I'm just grabbing whatever. Red, red is a foreground color, that's good. Throw some red in there. It'll tie in with that rusty barn roof up there. I like colors in my painting to tie in. Very, very faint. In fact, up here, I might go with even just a purpley tone. 
if you want to do that, just even a little bit of a purpley tone, just to, to show <laughs> some shadows, show some shadows along some of this cliff bank, the erosion here, or else somebody cut this with the with a tractor bulldozer or something. So now you can see I've got what's going to be a little chicken back here. I also put in a fence post, but we'll get back to that later. I know that the painting's wet and I'm, I'm going to mess it up a little bit as I put my finger down on it, but I'll, I'll fix it. If I go somewhere easy to fix, like the dark area of my bush there, that'll be okay. But I'm going to very carefully pull in some details to this chicken. Anyway, I'm just gonna do my best. I'm, I don't pretend to be an expert. I'm gonna play around with this. Just, <laughs> I'll be back in an hour. So as you've noticed, I like the liner brush for fences recently. I'm gonna do it again. It's just nice. It gives me a sharper, crisper effect than any other method. Um, except for, you know, glopping it on really thick, you know, and I don't necessarily like to do that. It makes it kind of challenging to get even even any remote amount of layering, you know? This way I can still layer my colors. See, I've got reds and all sorts of stuff going on here. I'm definitely going to get this fence in with the liner brush. There we go. I don't thin my paint down as much when I do, when I actually paint details in. I don't thin the paint as, down as much as doing something like a tree limb. It would be much thinner with a tree limb. It's thicker here. It's about half the thickness of a typical liner. Well, there you can see it. See, it's not flowing. So it's loose and it's certainly thinned down. It's not, it's not dry, but it's not in any way running like ink or water. And there you go. Now I'm just gonna brush in a few Large blades of grass over here. There we go. Not, um, it's not a lot of contrast. This is fairly light area to begin with, but it's enough that I'm seeing, I'm just barely, you know, seeing the grass. As I go away from, there's my color. I don't usually mix color with the liner brush. I typically just grab whatever's laying around. But as I go away from that uh, middle area, of course, I do want it to get just a shade or two darker. Why, why do I want that? Well, because that'll help to bring my eye in toward the center, to the focus of the painting, and not be so distracting out here on the edge. So now I'm gonna just add in some highlight to this little fence that I decided to put over here. Look at that crooked fence post right there. Is that not great? Look at the texture and the character. Just. I just add something. These are all supposed to be just like sticks and logs, you know, that were found and were cut and used. And they're not supposed to be obviously anything that looks too perfect. Well, there you go. See what a difference that makes. I like fences in a painting because it really, really helps to lead the eye back into the painting. See how all my fences are going into that doorway, which really kind of draws your eye into the barn. I like that. I think that's neat. Well, there you go. Well, I had honestly planned to have this nice filled in section and then this area of blankness. I thought, well, that might balance the painting. And as I, as I finish up and I step back, I realize, wow, this painting wants to like fall off the easel on this side. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tree right here, canopy, just leaves. You know, I do that a lot of my paintings anyways. And what that'll do is it'll kind of vignette the whole scene and it won't be lopsided anymore. So there you go. <laughs> this has actually got a lot of thin oil in it, but that's okay. I'm really not going to highlight. I mostly just want the silhouette of this tree because the light's coming through like this. These would be shadow leaves. However, on the back on the left hand side of a tree that's highlighted on the right, you would see some light. So I'm putting in that some light right here. All right. So just one more tree, <laughs> the painting that'll never end. Oh, that's why, you know, you can plan all day long a painting out. I do typically plan my paintings, but, um, you know, Good luck ever sticking to that plan totally. That's okay. Well, that about wraps up our painting for today. That tree on the right-hand side really was necessary. It made a big difference. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.
Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.